How's it going, Eliminators? Today we're gonna to be working on an old Briggs & Stratton engine. I'm gonna be installing a new head gasket and also some head bolts as well. And there's a little confusion as to what bolts you should use. So I'm gonna explain that a little more clearly. So let's get right into it. So I got an old snowblower here. This thing's from, I believe, the late 70s. And it is a Tracker 8. So it's an eight horsepower. Briggs and Stratton engine, and I have the model number here. It's a 190-412-0695-99. So that's a 190-400 series eight horse Briggs and Stratton engine. So when we first picked up this machine, I let the head bolt soak with some penetrating oil. I was then able to remove them, and it gave me a look at not only our cylinder head, but the piston and valves as well. Now there was some carbon buildup around the valves, which is normal, but we can see here there was a heavier deposit on the piston near where the spark plug goes. This was caused by running a spark plug that had too cold of a heat range, a J17LM instead of a hotter RJ19LM. A hotter plug will help prevent some of these carbon deposits by burning more of the air fuel mixture, thus running the engine more efficiently. Not to worry though, by using a long strand brass wheel, I was able to clean everything up. Be sure not to use a steel wheel or brush as aluminum is softer than steel, so it will gouge the aluminum. Next up, it was time to clean the cylinder head. As we can see, there was some significant carbon deposits. To do this, I used my walnut shell blaster. If you'd like to see how I set this up, just click the link in the top right of your screen and it'll take you to a video of where I set that up. The walnut shells work awesome and will not damage the aluminum. I ran it at around 120 psi. Looking at some before and after shots, we can see it cleaned all the carbon off the cylinder head without damaging the aluminum. The part almost looks new again. And to ensure the cylinder head was not warped from heat, I took a straight edge, in this case a metal ruler, and checked for gaps. The head was not warped, so we were ready to install our new head gasket. The only thing I had to do now was source the correct head bolts as I didn't want to reuse the old ones because they can tend to stretch over time. And I have installed nine new head bolts. You can see it there. But there is some confusion as to which head bolts you're supposed to use. So I'm gonna clarify that. So we can see here there is nine head bolts on this engine altogether. Now there is supposed to be three long head bolts and they go right here, here, and also here. So I'll show you what those look like. So coming over to the workbench here, you guys can see the long head bolt here and also the shorter head bolt here. Now I do have some part numbers here. The long bolt, the original OEM part number is supposed to be a 94776. Moving on to the shorter bolt, the OEM part number is a 94. 926. Now we can see here a little closer, this is what's known as a shouldered bolt. So it has a little thicker diameter up near the top of it. And what that does is it allows it to go in and fit snugly in the cylinder head. Now the problem was when I googled that part number, sometimes the bolts came up with a shoulder and sometimes they didn't. And if it doesn't have that shoulder, it's going to be a big issue because there's going to be play in between your cylinder head and your bolt, which is not good. So what I'm going to do now is up on screen, you're going to see a little comparison, the long bolt compared with the head stud bolt and then the shorter bolt compared with the 690 912 and that's the one that I used. So the nice thing was on the newer uh, 690 912 it actually has a longer shoulder which will help reduce play in between the cylinder head and the bolt and the thread length the length of the bolt overall is the same. So the benefits of going with a 690 912 was the same bolt as my shorter one, just had a longer shoulder and it worked out perfectly. Instead of running the three longer bolts near the exhaust port, what I did was I just ran nine shorter bolts. Now when you're torquing these bolts, there is a torque sequence and I'll show you here. And that's the order in which you tighten your bolts. And the final torque spec for this cylinder head is gonna be 165 inch pounds or 14 foot pounds. So what I did was a staggered torque. Basically, you just start out in the torque sequence and you torque it down to about 80 or 85 inch pounds and then you move up to 165 inch pounds after that. For your second torque, you just go one through nine and follow it and it's fairly simple. We also ran a new head gasket and here is the part number for that. And I also installed a brand new spark plug. I used an RJ19LM gapped at 30 thousandths of an inch. We also didn't like the old style of the high tension lead clip, which is one of these guys here. So basically that goes onto your high tension lead and then that clips onto your spark plug. I really don't like these, so we went with a quality NGK 
style high tension lead cap or a spark plug cap. So this thing runs awesome. I'll show you guys a video of it running. I just did a slight adjustment on the main jet of the carburetor. And a quick note, if you want to adjust your air fuel setting, you're gonna come up to this one here. I set that at one and a half turns out and down here, this one is about one and a quarter turns out and it runs perfectly like that. That's your main and this is your air fuel up here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn this one in and lean it out until it starts running choppy. You're gonna turn it out until it starts running choppy and then you're gonna find your middle point and then you're gonna come up here and adjust your air fuel mixture and fine tune it. Now to adjust your final RPM, you're gonna come up to this little screw right here. This is a lever that goes back to your throttle butterfly valve. And by turning it in, it's gonna open your throttle butterfly valve. By turning it out, because that's a backstopper in there, then it's gonna rotate down farther and give you a lower RPM. So you're just gonna come up to your idle handle here. You're gonna put it on fast, and then you're just gonna adjust that screw until you're happy with the high speed RPM. Now the factory setting for this engine was supposed to be 3600 RPM on high RPM or high throttle position, but that seemed a little too high for this old engine, so I ended up setting it to about 3200 RPM, and it sounds perfect. I'm quite happy with the way that it turned out. So that's pretty much it guys, you know, there's uh, a lot of confusion around these bolts and which ones to use. Now like I said, I just used nine of the same shorter bolts and I did not use the longer bolts here because again, there's not going to be a real drawback from that. This is the exhaust port, it does heat up more which means things are going to expand, it's going to put more tension on those bolts. But what I did was when I had the head off, I took a depth gauge in and all of the threads into the actual engine block for the cylinder head bolts, they're the same depth, which means you could technically use long bolts on all of the holes, and I don't think it would really make a big deal. So because of that, I just went ahead and used nine of the shorter bolts, and it worked out perfectly. And another thing that I wanted to add was that on the OEM numbers, directly from the parts manual for this specific engine, the OEM numbers said the bolts were three and 15 sixteenths, and three and nine sixteenths, but that's just not true guys. So we have the shorter bolt here and we can see I've lined it up with the two. So that's a two and five eighths bolt from the top to the bottom. And if we line up the other bolt here, kind of the same way, that longer bolt measures about three inches long. So essentially you'd be looking at the shorter bolt is measuring about two and five eighths of an inch and the longer bolt measures about three inches. So essentially if you wanted to absolutely make this thing as OEM as possible, you could run the 691690 head stud in these three areas right here. And then you would be running a longer thread near that exhaust port and it would be as OEM as possible. Like I said, I didn't do that because I really don't think it's necessary. But again, if you want to, you can go ahead and do that and then you'll just be having a little bit of thread sticking up, which really, I don't think anybody really cares about that. I tried to find the bolts without the head stud on it because obviously when I removed these bolts, it didn't have that extra little thread on them and I, like, I just couldn't find them. So just to wrap things up, if you're gonna be running the three longer bolts right there, you're gonna run a 691 690 and for all the other six shorter bolts you're going to be running a 690912. That's all your new part numbers for your head bolts. This thing runs awesome. There's absolutely no issues with it. And like I said, because there's a lot of confusion, I just wanted to make a quick video and explain this. And this is what we get, guys. So nine brand new head bolts, a brand new head gasket. I also drained out the old oil and I put in 28 ounces of premium 5W30 oil into it. The parts took a while to get in because the bolts were on back order unfortunately but we got her done and like I said my customer will be glad to get this thing back so in the video you guys saw there of this machine running I did have the uh, head bolts torqued down but the interesting thing about this cover here is that they actually have three little slots on the cover and they go underneath these three head bolts so basically I wanted to run it and I knew that it hadn't been run in quite some time so I wanted to fully adjust the carburetor and it was just easier with that little cover off so all I did was uh, loosened off the three bolts right there slid the cover on and then I went around and torqued them all down and then you can see that I've taken some green paint here and the green paint just lets me and my customer know that all those nine head bolts 
have been torqued to spec, which is again, 165 inch pounds. So this thing's uh, completely ready to go. I even went ahead and changed the fuel line for him. So I got a brand new fuel line on there and that's how the old one ran was around the outside like that. So this machine's completely finished and it's ready to go back to my customer. Now, apologies if this video wasn't all that interesting. This is a video that's essentially being made for a very specific group of people who are going to be pulling the head off of theirs to do a head gasket. And they're gonna say, oh gee, you know, I really don't wanna use these old head bolts because those bolts, as far as I'm concerned, were from the 1970s or the 80s. You know, they were really old. And when you tighten up a head bolt over and over, you reuse it, what's gonna happen is you're stretching that bolt every time you tighten it up. It may have been over torqued at some point, so I really didn't wanna use the bolts. So that's why I went ahead and used brand new head bolts. So if you enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. It really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week. So be sure to check the channel out next week for new content. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.